Hello kids! This week, we will be learning about spreadsheets, specifically Microsoft Excel. These are our objectives. First, we will describe what a spreadsheet is and its uses. And, we will also identify basic parts of Microsoft Excel spreadsheet window. What is a spreadsheet? A spreadsheet is a software that lets you work with numbers using columns and rows. It is designed to hold numbers and short text. A spreadsheet helps us sort data, arrange data easily, and calculate numerical data. What makes spreadsheet program unique is its ability to calculate values. Microsoft Excel is the most commonly used spreadsheet, but there are also other alternatives like Google Sheet, iWork Numbers, OpenOffice Calc, and Lotus Symphony Spreadsheet. Let me ask you this question. Is a spreadsheet appropriate for writing short stories? The answer is no. Microsoft Word is appropriate for it. But what if we want to create a record of all the storybooks in the library? Can we use a spreadsheet for this? Yes! So I'm going to show you some examples where you can use spreadsheets like Microsoft Excel. You can use it to keep track of your household expenses or to even monitor your savings for the month. If you want, you can also use Microsoft Excel to create your own task tracker for your submissions in the different subjects. Microsoft Excel is also used in computing grades, creating inventories, and tables and charts which include numerical data. Now, try to identify which among these activities needs Microsoft Excel to be created. Did you get the same? Great job! You can open Microsoft Excel by following the steps below. Click the Start button. Click All Apps. Click Microsoft Office. And click Excel. You can also use the search box just beside your Start button. This is how your Microsoft Excel window looks like. Similar to your Microsoft Word, the topmost part is called your title bar, which contains the name of your file. Below it is the ribbon. The ribbon contains different tabs, like the Home tab, Insert, page layout, formulas, and others. And for each tab, it contains different groups of commands, like the font group and alignment group. So all the commands that you need to change how your letters look like is found in the font group. Okay, let's use zoom in to have a closer look of your worksheet. The rectangles that have capital letters in them are called column headings. This goes from top to bottom of your spreadsheet. The rectangles which have numbers in them are called your row headings. This goes from left to right of your worksheet. The part where your column and row meet is called cell. And each cell is named by combining its column and row. So this cell is named as D4. Similarly, this is cell C3. Can you name this cell? Correct. That is cell B4. What about this cell? Right. Now, the name of your cell, the selected cell, is actually found at the top leftmost corner of your worksheet, which is called the name box. So whichever cell you select, 
its name appears inside the name box. So this is C3, it's appearing in the name box. Just beside your name box is a long rectangular bar which is called the formula bar. The formula bar shows you the content or what is inside the active cell. And it also allows you to create and view formulas. Right now, we can't see anything in the formula bar because the active cell is also empty. But notice when I start typing something, whatever I type in the active cell also appears inside the formula bar. Now, there are three kinds of data entries that we can type inside a cell. The first one, which we did already, are labels. Labels are the text or anything that we type in a spreadsheet that is not meant for computing. So for example, we would like to count the savings that we have for three months. So that's savings. Okay, let me type January, February, and March. And we would like to put amount on the next column. Another data entry that you can put inside a cell are constants. Constants are numbers that you compute in your spreadsheet. For example, our constants in this uh, for January is 185 and then for February you have 220 March let's say 165 now these are the numbers that we would like to compute okay and just to mark the currency let me mark this with the peso sign Lastly, we can also enter formulas inside the cells. Formulas tell whether the computer should add, subtract, multiply, or divide the numbers. For example, we want to add up our savings from January to March, and we would like the answer to appear here. But before that, let me just type total in this cell so that I know what the number next to it is all about. To start the formula, click on the cell where you want the answer to appear. Just remember, every formula in a spreadsheet should start with an equal sign. Since that's addition, I would like to use the SUM formula, open parentheses, and then select the range of numbers that you would like to add. So C2 colon C4. So that represents the numbers from C2 until C4. Don't forget the close parentheses. Then just press enter. Your computer will automatically compute for the numbers. What's good about spreadsheets is that when you change the the constants, for example, let's change 220, let's make it uh, 190. Observe what happens with the total. Okay. The total automatically changes as you change your constants. Okay, let's try it for March. Okay, so there. But don't worry, we'll have to learn more about formulas for the next week. For now, okay, let's uh, remember that the three entries that we can type inside the cell are labels, which are the text, constants, which are the numbers, and formulas. Formulas should always begin with an equal sign.